start with an opening statement from you, Coach, please. Um, just want to welcome everybody to College Station, Aggie Land, for this uh, for this NCAA regional. Excited, um, excited for our team to have the opportunity to play in this. This is what you work for all year long: is to have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament. As we've seen across the country, it's it's uh, really really hard to just get in the tournament. Uh, it's even harder uh, to host. Um, we have a team in this regional that that I think deserve to to, to be a host. So. Uh, hosting and being a national seed, all that kind of stuff is, is just a reward for the season. Um, it, it does nothing moving, moving forward. Now it's just about playing good baseball. Um, and we're looking forward to doing that here in front of the 12th man. Questions for Troy and Micah? Uh, Troy, for someone like you who's been in the tournament since this before at Oregon State, just what is the message you're passing on to some of the other guys who are here making their first appearance in the regional? It's just trying to keep it the same thing that we do every day. You know, don't make the moment any bigger than it is. Um, we just, I mean, we just had a team meeting and talking about there's no such thing as rising to an occasion. It's just reverting back to your training. So this is just going to be something that we do. It's, we, we can't make it, can't make the stage any bigger than it is. Yeah, yeah Micah, um, what's the season been like for you? I know that's kind of hard to sum up in words, but I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs, but now that you're here in this situation, what's what's the mentality that you have coming? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of learning experiences going on, but I mean, you gotta. It's a new season right now, so you know you, you take what you can from the past, but you never let it determine the future. Um, and so, you know, yeah, like you're saying, there's been successes, there's been some failures, but as long as I learn from it um, and just move on and uh, prepare for coming up um, tomorrow, then that's all I can do, so. Micah, for you coming off of your last start, really solid performance, five struggles. Even though you say it's a new season, it's having that confidence in what you're able to do. It's a really potent offense like Florida, keeping the confidence going against four Rockers. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I'm a very confident guy, and just being able to solidify that with a, with a good start coming into the postseason, um, I think that's going to help me um, help the team really kind of roll off of that. In the back, John. Michael, what is it like for you to be able to get the ball tomorrow and, and get this regional kicked off for a &M? It's an honor. It really is. Um, I'm thankful for it, thankful for the opportunity. Um, but like uh, Troy was saying, it's really just another game. And so can't make too big of a deal with it. Um, Coach Lossning was just telling us we're always going to deal with adversity and adrenaline. And so we got to be able to control that. And that's just kind of my mindset going into it. With both of you guys coming from other programs, I mean, how has this experience been different and maybe even similar as far as making your way to the regional? Mm -hmm. I mean, every team has a different story, right? So every team you're part of is going to be completely different. But, um, you know, just going through the same, I mean, you go through the same thing every year where you have highs, you have lows, your team comes together. Um, guys pick each other up, and I think that's something that our team has done a really good job of is, you know, when someone like Micah, for example, goes has a little slump, someone's able to pick him up. Someone like myself has a slump, someone behind me is going to pick him up. I think that's been pretty similar. It's just everybody's, you know, got each other's back, and ultimately it's culminated to this where we are right now. So. Behind you then, Cole. Troy, you know, you've caught so many games. How is this, you know, kind of limited appearances in this couple of weeks been to, to get you up, you know, as close to being fully 100% as possible? Yeah, I feel great. I feel ready to go. It's opening day tomorrow, so uh, my legs are fresh as can be. <laughs> oh. uh, both for Troy and Mike, uh, a pitcher and catcher's relationship is really strong. And for you guys going for different programs, you only really have one year to be able to develop. But how do you feel your relationship has grown throughout the season? And do you ever feel like there's a point where you can understand maybe some frustration I mean, Micah's going through that you can see his pitches? Or same thing with you, Micah, with Troy, being able to set up certain frames? I'll tell you this one. Um, I think that, like you said, we only, you know, it's still pretty new, our relationship. But just the, uh, ev the, the bond that you can build in the fall, it's really important. And I feel like we did a good job of that, him with the whole staff, really. Um, and so, like you're saying, you know, um, just picking each other up. I think that part of um, part of the bond as a pitcher and catcher is when I do do something bad, and he can, you know, hold me accountable right there and just kind of re re uh, kindle my focus. And you know, that's his job 
as the catcher, he, he really drives the game. And so um, just being able to really not get frustrated with each other and like we're on the same team, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool and important. Yeah, Mike. Uh, I know we're talking about uh, adrenaline and not, you know, rise to occasion. Have you been some of the older guys or the guys who've been here talk to you about the atmosphere and in Bluebell during a regional and, and how that can maybe be some adrenaline provoking? Um, I mean, yeah. I feel like I've competed at the highest level in front of the most people um, that that I could. But I know it's going to be crazy here. I've seen videos of it. Um, I don't think anybody here has uh, competed at a regional here. So. Um, it's going to be new for all of us, really. But I feel like um, the older guys, we have some pretty good experience. Been to Omaha a few times. Some of us have a championship. So um, that's kind of our, our job to help the younger guys um, let them know what to expect. Well, for that answer, what about how, how do you balance the advantage of playing at home versus the pressure? You mentioned it's really going to be wild. You expect it to be wild tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it should be pretty wild. I know the 12th man is going to show up. Um, but just knowing that they're on our side and the other teams, the pressure's on them for sure um, with the fans because I know that the 12th man is always going to support us. So that's, uh, that gives us confidence. They're rooting for us. Yeah. There's, no, there's no pressure when they're rooting for you. So, you know, these fans are going to have, have our backs through everything and they're going to help us. You know, we're going to feed off them. They're going to push us to, you know, do what we've been doing all season. In the back, John, and then we'll go to... Troy, what have you learned about your Roberts team that you'll face tomorrow? Uh, honestly, I don't know much yet. Uh, we'll kind of dive more into that later, but I think you know the coaches do a good job of doing a lot of the scouting reports, and they feed us the information we need. Um, sometimes, as a player, you can become overwhelmed with too much information. I know we have a lot of information to gather, and they, our coaches do a really good job of giving us what we need to be successful rather than just flooding our brains with certain things. Last player question from Justin. Sure, you guys have been down numerous occasions this year, come back, you know, offensively been scoring a lot of runs. I know the last game of the SEC tournament you didn't, but offensively, how do you guys feel heading into a regional knowing you have the firepower to put up a lot of runs if you get hot? I mean, yeah, it feels great. You get, you know, confidence. It gives you kind of that easy confidence early in the game, right? Obviously, we want to jump out to a lead in every single game and get going, but I think we trust in our routine enough, we trust in each other enough that as the game goes on, you know, maybe the first time through the order we'll struggle a little bit, but we know that the information we gather in every single at-bat, the information we gather from everybody else's at-bats, we're able to then use that in our next at-bat and just kind of keep it going. So, yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. You guys are all set. Thank you. Question for Coach, start off the road. All right, Coach, um, can you tell us your philosophy about, about wanting to play the early game tomorrow? Yeah. Um, for all the years I've been a head coach and hosted regionals, uh, I've always wanted to play the first game. I think there's a lot of tremendous advantages to that. Um, the places I've been before, I was always really concerned about the crowd and making sure we had a great atmosphere. Um, probably overthought it a little bit, probably should have done it before now. But I always told myself that if I, I was ever at a, at a place of this size where I believe the fans are going to come anyway, um, and they probably would have come anyway at TCU as well, um, that, I would play the, that I would vote to play the first game. There's just so many tremendous advantages to that. You get to hit, take batting practice on the field. You, you're sure if there's rain, uh, which I've been a part of regionals where the first game got played and the second game didn't, which completely changes the bracket. In this regional, um, you know, the, t sat, the loser's bracket game on Saturday starts at noon, which would be a really quick turnaround if you play the night game or even get extended, say the first game goes longer or you play an extra inning game. So, I, you know, I got on the phone with Coach Garrido and I were really close and he talked about it all the time. I got on the phone last week with Coach Burtman at LSU, Coach Maneri from LSU, and I just wanted to kind of bounce it off them and and because they that's what they've always done. Uh, and so I knew several weeks ago when we put in our bid, we we put in the bid that if we were the host, we would like to play the first game. Cool. Coach, when you look at a guy like Jordan Thompson and his performance in the SEC Champion, I mean, the SEC tournament wasn't just defensively, but also at the plate. 
when you have someone like that who can come on strong in the later uh, later in the season, just what does that say about your team and dynamics? Well, it's you know it's, it says a lot about Jordan. I mean, he's he's a guy that he would have had every right. He was one of I think he and Boast were the only returning. Boast was an everyday player, but in the time Jordan got to play last year, I think he hit over 300. So if anybody had somewhat skins on the wall, positive skins on the wall, it, he was one. And he didn't nearly play as much early as, as he probably maybe deserved. Um, and then when he got his chance, he stayed in there. There were other times where he did, even after he got his chance, I still gave somebody else an opportunity. And he's just kind of been the ultimate team guy. He's been ready when called upon. And that's how you put together great seasons. And as a coach, with the experience that you know you have as a coach, having been through so many seasons, you try and preach and tell guys that throughout the whole year. I'm st we're still doing it. This regional, most regionals, most tournaments come down to, they don't come down to just the first pitcher, they come down to the ninth or 10th pitcher, or the guy that has to come in and play defense, or the guy that has to get a bunt down, or something like that. And so you keep preaching to guys to be ready, be ready, be ready, and he, he stayed ready. And so he's reaping the benefits of do, you know, doing all the right things. Coach, Micah's performance last week certainly you know, gave you the, the, the knowledge that you needed that not only were you seeing in practice that he could go out and carry it out for five innings. Did that make it an easy decision to have him pitch against a legitimate team or a Robertson game? Yeah, for sure. No doubt about it. You know, if, if, if he hadn't have done that, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know what we've done. It's, it, a lot of it still comes down to matchups. I mean, shoot, you can make a vote. He outpitched Detmer last weekend, so maybe he should not be pitching the first game. I mean, you can look at it a million different ways. But uh, I think the bottom line is Mike has been in this environment. Um, Oral Roberts hasn't faced him before. Uh, you know, TCU, who's in this environment, has faced, has seen Micah before. Uh, so everything led to, to just that being the right decision. And... Uh, you know, now it's just about how he goes out and pitches. Coach, as someone who's been in the opposing dugout during the regional, um, what were your takeaways as a, as a visiting coach when Texas A&M was hosting? Yeah, that first base dugout smoking hot. You know, I can tell you that. It's a long, long day when you're over there <laughs> during, it, during the day game or evening game. I've been in it for a regional and super regional. That's the first thing. Uh, you know, the rest of it is uh, obviously the fans are awesome and, and the atmosphere is awesome. Uh, but m most of these teams have played in, in big environments, you know. I mean, I think one of the advantages of being in the SEC is that we play in more of those environments. Uh, there are stumps, obviously, still, for example, in the Big 12, but there's just not as many. And, um, and so, you know, our guys are more than prepared for that. And uh, certainly you'd like to think that, the twelfth man will, will have an impact on the game uh, against the other team, but the good teams can handle that. And uh, it, but it still just comes down to, like like he said, you know, in a, any game you play, but especially a big game, right? You're going to handle two things. You have to fight adrenaline and adversity. And so, from the first second the guys step on campus, we talk about how how do you handle that? And you handle it through your routine. You handle it through your breathing. You handle it be, by being able to to be in control of yourself because you can't control your, your, your performance until you're in control of yourself. So is it a coincidence though that you picked a one o'clock game when the visiting dugout gets smoking hot? <laughs> yeah, well, I think our dug, I don't know how much shade will be in our dugout, but, but, uh, but no, I didn't, yeah, I, I, I didn't put anything, any thought into that, uh, that way. In the back, John? Coach, what challenges do you expect from Laura Roberts tomorrow? Uh, I, I think they're starting a big lefty named Smith. He's really good. He's older. They have an older team. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I know compared to TCU, for sure, and, pro and I'm pretty sure compared to Oral Roberts. I think we only have six players on our team that have even played in a regional, you know. And Oral Roberts is one of those clubs that they're so successful within their conference every single year. They're always in the NCAA tournament. Historically, it's been that way since. Sonny Galloway, Rob Walton, you know, and now Coach Fulmar are all the um, – have been the head coaches. So they're used to playing in tournaments. They're used to – they've never hosted, I don't think, so they're used to playing on the road. Um, Ryan Fulmar, ironically, is from about 20 minutes from my hometown. He's from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm from Hagerstown, Maryland. So 
he's a little younger than me, but uh, but uh, I know Smith can really pitch. They have a great closer, so it's real important that we try and get a lead and keep a lead, and we don't have to face that guy down. Um, and they and they really they ha- they ha- they play solid baseball. There's a lot of bunting. We're going to have to probably handle some bunts. Um, which puts, always puts pressure on somebody. So they're just a really soft – when you win 38 games, I don't care what schedule you're playing, you win 38 games. They just won their championship game 21-2, to two, so they're feeling really good at, about themselves. So it's going to be it's t- as tough of a matchup as you're going to see. Last question, Justin. Coach, I know you don't want to get down, but seeing how battle-tested your guys are through this season, what's your confidence that you kind of stay level-headed through this regional? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd never count these guys out. I can promise you there's plenty of times where, I mean, when we were down 9 nothing to South Carolina, I was probably a, a batter away from taking Troy out of the game just to get him rest for the next day. And then, you know, Targotch hit the, I think it was a grand slam and got us back in the ball game. And so, uh, yeah, I would never, this is, this. I don't want to say, I, I don't want to disrespect any other teams that I've coached before, but this team has as show, shown as much perseverance and competitive grit as any team I've coached. There have been others, but this is this one's right there with it. Thank you, Coach. Let me get Travis. Let me. This, this is my man right here. Oh, I'm just gonna uh, go with with, with the trans. I know baseball is an interconnected community, but with the transfer portal, does it seem like there's more guys who know guys who, and, and that these regionals can be a little bit more of a reunion for a, a lot of different guys. Probably so. I mean, the the baseball community is interconnected through summer baseball and select baseball. Uh, The transfer portal, you know, it's a new thing now. Um, So I think you'll see that more and more as it comes along. But, but yeah, I mean, when we every time we play somebody, you know, there's somebody saying hello because they played together at some point before. We saw Ryan Targotch in a walking boot coach. Is he out? No, no. No, He he just has a uh, when he hit the base. uh, in the Florida game, he kind of hit it with his heel. Just he he has a little, just a bruise, no big deal. So we're just trying to keep him off of it to the last possible second. He's fine. All right. All right. Thank you all.